Welcome to another episode of The, the Epic, Epic Family, Family Road, Road Trip. Trip. Alright, so tonight we're going to be heading out on an overnight camping trip with the snowmobiles, just me and Pete and our cousin Frederick. Uh, a couple weeks ago, the most of our cousins were up and we had a big snowmobile uh, session together and it was a lot of fun, but during that we had some talks with our cousin Frederick about heading out again, but uh, this time to do an overnight trip on a, an, on a different lake than ours. And in the morning, we're gonna head back here and then Fred will be heading out because it looks like it's calling for snow in the area where he lives. And uh, he does a lot of snow plowing, so he's gonna be pretty busy after that. And then Caroline and mom are hopefully gonna be able to make it into town to pick up some tapping equipment so we can start uh, tapping some of the maple trees in the area and hopefully start making maple syrup within the next couple weeks. It's a pretty big project and uh, we're looking forward to learning how to do it all, but we've got lots of maples in the area. That's one thing Canada does have a lot of and it's famous for maple syrup. And uh, anything homemade, especially from the island, is uh, even better. And this is just another one of the skills of off-grid living that we've been wanting to learn. So hopefully tomorrow, if we can pick up all that stuff, then we can start tapping trees tomorrow and, and uh, boiling it into maple syrup. Oh yeah, we should have enough room for everything. Well, we were up here last weekend, and uh, that was beauty with all the boys. We did a bunch of ripping, a bunch of local stuff. And uh, we just thought, hey, it'd be nice to take a little camping sesh because we've never done that actually on the sleds. Go uh, find some of the lakes, go exploring, find some cool spots and just stay out in the woods for a night or two. What do you think we should eat tonight? Should, should we go tonight? with steaks or should steaks. we? Yeah, steaks. Yeah, let's do it. Alrighty. Pretty much all ready to go. I'm going to be towing the trailer behind this skidoo, which is the 600. Finally leaving, it's a lot later than we wanted, but it'll be fun anyways. We're not even close to the north arm. Really? Yeah. Maybe you leave, start going, we'll follow. Okay. I think we concluded that is not the spot. So we're gonna retrace ourselves just so we don't get hopelessly lost. The boys are attempting to get up to a lake that so far they have only seen on a map. Right now, they are crossing our own lake, which during the daytime they are very familiar with. But now, without the ability to see familiar landmarks, they're finding it difficult to navigate. Go straight this way, we're heading down North Arm. Yeah. Wait, where are we trying to get to? Down that way. So what we did was we went into that cove. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we just stick to the right. Stick to the shore, go there, and then to the right. Listen well, to that, is that a river? I think it is. Wow. Should we walk it? Is yeah. Just a check? Let's go, let's go look at it. Yeah, let's go. So we finally reached the North Arm and uh, we were talking about how we wanted to see wildlife out here and in the background you can hear an owl. You shut the sleds off, it's just total serenity. You hear the river flowing and just fresh air, you know, beautiful. And then you stop yeah. and you hear an owl hooting, it's just top it off. I don't yeah. know, it's just awesome. As I was coming here though, I was talking like, oh, it's nice with the cold weather that we've left the slush and water behind. <laughs> As I said that, we broke through because it's a little shallow and then uh, your ski went through right over there. Yeah, turning around, you feel it kind of go under. I thought it was slush, but it went through the ice. It's a little sketchy. <laughs> it is not thick at all. No, no. As, we, as I came in here, I was like, oh yeah, in the summertime, you can't even get in here. So it's probably very mm -hmm. shallow. Right. It's like an inch. It's 
sturdy enough to walk on, so we're gonna go explore right now. It looks pretty neat. Beautiful, That's beautiful to listen to. Two of the best sounds in the world, rivers and beautiful wildlife. So we're gonna go explore this river and uh, see if we can take the sleds up it. <laughs> I think this is an old beaver lodge. Hey, look at these tracks. So we just came through a beauty hike in the woods here following the river and following some wolf tracks actually, which are just giant paw prints and uh, fairly new looking. So it's pretty cool, but it's probably like another kilometer or two up to Scar Lake and uh, we're not really dressed for a hike. So we're probably gonna head back. You definitely would want uh, snowshoes if you were just walking this. After hiking part of the way up to the lake, they decide to head back and make an attempt at bushwhacking the snowmobiles through the forest. Well, I got it stuck first over there and then uh, we got it a little bit out and we, Fred had the idea to rip her around here and it almost worked. You want to try and deadlift this thing up? <laughs> yeah, I can. Oh, man. One more. One more. Oh yeah, yeah, we got yeah. it too far. Okay, ready? Hold on, I'm holding it with my leg. Oh, really? Okay. One, two. <laughs> just maybe dig It's hard to get that. leverage because it's all powder. Well, it's it? not even the leverage, it's just the we're pushing the snow more than... Got it out. Well, that took uh, a bit. We shut off the camera for a little bit and just kind of deadlifted it to the side as much as we could. Eventually got it to a spot where he was able to kind of grip it out. Just look at that. Need it all like come, oh, oh, yeah, come look at up. how deep this is. And it's all filled in now even. Yeah. yeah what turned solid. out to be just a quick turnaround ended up uh, taking, how long do you think that was? <laughs> like Good bit. Yeah, a good while. So, but we got it out. We've worked out an appetite, so we're gonna mm. head to camp and get some steaks grilling over an open fire. Oh yeah. It was getting late and they were hungry. So they decided to head on to a more familiar trail and a lake they knew they could get to. Well, that was fun. Like you, you can't really beat just exploring at night. There's, some, there's a very special feeling to, really it feels like you're heading out into the unknown again because even though we know this lake perfectly well like i could i always thought i could go blindfolded but as soon as you're in the dark we just are driving to somewhere we think we're gonna go end up in some random cove and then have to like find the maps where we're going so it took a while to figure out where we're actually headed to to get to the north arm but uh it was worth it push it right to the wall on the side and then move these two and put them two over there. This gray bag here, Fred, is our uh, sleeping stuff. So that can go in. Should we leave the cooler out? Or just grab what we need from it and then bring it? Oh, you could leave it in there. Grab the propane heater and the water and we're good. Found a nice dead cedar I was just able to push over and it's nice dry wood that uh, should light up really good. But uh, this was just one little log. We're gonna need a lot more because I think we're planning on having a nice fire and such a beautiful night. I can't imagine going to bed uh, at least for another couple hours. So we'll probably want to sit out and enjoy a bit of the silence.
thick cedar smoke on that. That's a beautiful dead tree though. Like that's gorgeous uh, cedar. What a night though. Mm. Yeah, no wind. Maybe and minus 10, you know? Like well, I'm in nice a square and I'm cozy. We just sat around enjoying that fire for a good three hours. I mean, it was nine something by the time we got camp set up and it's already probably 11.45. So through a uh, cast iron, it's a flat grill essentially. We call it a plancha from uh, Argentinian chef. But I'm just gonna put some olive oil and get the steaks on there. It's really just sitting right over coals right now, which are really smoky because this fire is directly on a lake that's frozen. So if anyone's ever cooked over a frozen lake before, you know, it's obviously ice and that ice begins to melt. And like this right now, all the wood is and ash and coal has created its own little level that the fire can stay on and stay warm. But really it's about six or eight inches of water below it. And if you step around here now, you kind of sink in. So. You've got a limited amount of good cooking time is what we've found because you go from a roaring fire to it started, starts to die down and then sink into water so it just goes out. Anyway, that oil is gonna heat up. In the meantime, I'm gonna get, I think we have three ribeyes. I can't find the good seasoning we had for them, but yeah, I don't know where that is. Uh-oh, this looks like two ribeyes. Yeah, they're big. So yeah, we're gonna put these on. I don't know how hot that pan is yet, just because there's not too many coals, but it'll be most likely 10 or 15 minutes on one side, probably 10 minutes on one side and then six minutes on the other, just because of the, oh yeah, that's hot. Yeah. Yeah, and smoking. These things are gonna be cedar smoked cooked over a fire. Yeah, we'll get those. We've also got a nice thing of baguette bread and some gouda. And I think it's got even cumin seeds in it. That's delicious. We'll cut some of this stuff up with some bread. Wait for those steaks to cook and enjoy a meal. plating these guys up. There's two of them. We've already started digging into the bread and cheese and you split it up. Threw some, uh, I forget what it's called. It's like this black salt and uh, some other beautiful seasoning on these ribeyes. Probably got these medium rare. Gorgeous. Mm -mm. Okay. That is nuts. So I'm going to get some water boiling on the jet boil, make some coffee and tea before we fully pack up camp and head out. Alright, so the water's boiling. We decided to go with some chamomile instead of coffee just because it's a little easier to make and uh, easier to clean and still very delicious.
tea without milk is so uncivilized. <laughs> what movie is that? The Great Escape. Oh yeah. Hey guys, so the boys are back from uh, a wonderful camping trip and they're giving us a hand now uh, starting with a new venture which is looking for maple sap so we can boil down some syrup. So step one is finding some maple trees that are of the right size. So they've got to be a minimum of 12 inches in diameter. This one's 42 I think you said. So um, it's plenty big. It's a beautiful straight healthy maple. Um, we're, we're, we've done, you know, small amounts before at our old place uh, of uh, maple sap. Never successfully boiled it down to syrup. We just didn't collect enough. But when the kids were really young, we tapped trees and did our best. But we're going to give it a good attempt here. And so we're going to start with uh, just four taps. Uh, yesterday, Carol and Caroline were in town and they picked up some of the basic gear. Um, now, this time of year, I, everybody's thinking about maple syrup and so they were almost sold out but they were able to get four spiles so these are the spiles that we're gonna put into the tree and then four buckets these plastic buckets will hang off of the spile we'll show you how how it's done and then we couldn't they were sold out on tops for the buckets which is pretty important when it's windy needles and all kinds of things will fall in there so we'll cover them temporarily with something we'll have to figure out what that is and then we're going to order in maybe another six buckets, so we should have ten going. And that's definitely not a commercial operation, but for just uh, our first year of trying to get, you know, a couple of jars of maple syrup, I think this is going to do it. But we can see as we hone our skills and get more equipment, we can see that uh, around here there's a couple of large maple bush uh, areas. We're going to be able to, you know, harvest a lot of sap and, and make enough maple syrup to last us throughout the year. Yeah, hopefully at least 20 um, containers. 20 mason jars or jars. Yeah. and That'd be super nice. And the beauty is, uh, we may not be able to successfully do it this year, but we're gonna try maple, you can make maple candy, where you lay the maple syrup in the snow and roll it up on a stick. We're hoping to bring that to you in the next couple of weeks, as well as um, maple butter, maple sugar even, like actual granulated sugar. So, so many things we can do with this beautiful natural uh, product that comes out of the trees here. So, let's get, uh, we know that, let's get started by, you know, putting a tap into this tree. All right, we're gonna drill on the south facing side of this tree. That way, what little sun we get this time of year will come and hit this side of the tree first and hopefully get the sap flowing. We're gonna go just above waist height and on a slight angle up. And we only go the depth of the spile. So see on the bottom of the spile, that's it'll catch the sap coming up the tree and float out to the end. So let's just go ahead and find a nice kind of smooth area. So now we wait for the sun. It's uh, it's still too cold. I don't think it is quite above zero uh, right now. The temperature gauge on the front of the house is showing that it's around zero. So we're just going to leave it. And uh, if it warms up more today, hopefully the sap will start flowing. Um, if not, later this week. So we're going to go tap one that's up in a spot that's not so uh, deep in the forest here. And maybe it's getting hit by a bit more sun. Let's go take a look. For the night, when I pick up the other buckets, we should get a mallet yeah. out of the Jeep. Perfect. So this tree is up closer to uh, clearing, so it's getting a bit more sun. And you can see the first drop of sap. So 
and you get the spiral in there and it's definitely not flowing strongly yet but at least there's some sap there so that's a good sign All right, so it turned out Carol was right. When we were in the darker part of the forest, the trees hadn't really started, the sap hadn't really started flowing in those trees. She suggested we come up here where there's a lot more sunlight right now at this time of year, and uh, these guys are, are dripping. So that's awesome. So we're starting to collect sap now, which is exciting. It's not moving very fast, obviously. What we need is a couple of really warm days. Cold nights, warm days, that gets the sap flowing. So. Uh, we're just going to sit back and wait for the weather. I threw on a quick uh, cap of uh, a piece of cheesecloth here, doubled up, to keep the bark and needles, you know, as the wind blows, little pieces of bark fall off and get in there. And that's just going to make it so we have to filter it more later. So by covering them with a piece of cheesecloth, I think that'll take care of that problem. So yeah, we're going to let the sap flow. It'll freeze overnight, right? We're still getting... Um, my, below freezing temperatures at night so you'll probably see an, a sapsicle coming out of here uh, tomorrow morning but that's okay as soon as the sun comes up things start warming up it gets back into business so I'm just going to take a taste of that fresh beautiful sap and it's just got a, a slight sugary sweet taste to it so pretty exciting this is uh, a new thing for us but uh, we're going to take you with us the whole journey of turning this beautiful sap into some kind of a, a maple syrup product. With St. Patrick's Day coming up, I felt inspired to cook one of our favorite meals, an Irish beef stew, and pair it with warm, fresh bread and butter for a hearty meal on a cold night. I will link the recipes below. They are fairly simple and delicious. For this recipe, I used two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast, one teaspoon sugar, one and a quarter cups warm water, one and quarter teaspoons kosher salt, two and a half to three and a half cups of all-purpose flour, plus extra for dusting. I only used two and a half. Once everything is nicely combined, I covered the bowl and set it in a warm place to rise for one hour. Meanwhile, I started on the stew. First, I used beef chuck stew meat cut into cubes and browned it in oil on the stove, seasoning well with salt and pepper. Next, I prepared the vegetables. I diced a few cloves of garlic and two onions. I then diced two stalks of celery and peeled and diced four carrots. Next, I cut up a bunch of small yellow potatoes. You don't want to cut your vegetables too small because they will soften a lot during the long cook time. Now that the vegetables and meat are ready, I sauteed the onions and garlic in a large pot before adding in the meat and three tablespoons of flour and combining everything. Now it's time to add four tablespoons of tomato paste, three to four cups of beef stock, and a stout Irish beer. Mm -hmm. 
Finally, add in all the vegetables, some bay leaves, sprigs of thyme, and let it cook for up to two or three hours. Now that the bread was done its first rise, I prepared it for its last rise in a floured proof basket, which I covered for another 30 minutes. I then prepared the oven and Dutch oven for baking by preheating to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and lining the cast iron Dutch oven with parchment paper. Once the dough was finished rising, I baked the bread for 30 minutes with the lid on and 15 minutes uncovered. This was a delicious and cozy meal for a winter's night in the cabin with the family. And in the meantime, we'll see you down the road. <laughs>